$30 a month for Photoshop. The thing is, you don't even need it. I do some Photoshopping stuff, um, generally make thumbnails and things, and I never use Photoshop. Uh, what I use instead is Paint.net. I just Google Paint.net, and then this is what it is. It's a small, um, made by a small development team. Um, you can donate to it, um, but you don't have to pay anything. It's free. Um, another good alternative is GIMP which has a lot of features as well, but I'm going to go through paint.net. Although uh, Photoshop can do stuff uh, in vector, from what I've seen, vector images, I prefer to use raster images. Um, so that's all that this image was for, is for that joke, raster, raster image. Okay, moving on. So I've got a bunch of assets here. I've got a 1-Up, I've got a Demon, I've got a clip from Super Mario 64, and I've got another one. Um, so I'm going to go through and make a thumbnail. Uh, using some paint.net uh, tips and tricks to make a thumbnail. Um, this is what I've prepared earlier, so it's going to look a bit like this. Um, so if this looks interesting to you, th there's what we're going to make at the end. So we're going to start with this picture. So we're going to select everything, and we're going to make it a bit bigger because we don't want to see any of the text. And something like, oh, we want to see all of the tree. There we go. Let's center the tree, like, not really centered, there we go, something like that, okay. Now the problem is, I actually don't want Mario in here, so I've selected this magic wand. What does the magic wand do? You click something and it finds a bunch of similar intensities that are connected, either in that area or globally, which is what this does, so now it's selected these white regions over here. I don't want to select it globally, I just want to select Mario. And I'm going to increase the tolerance so that it gets most of Mario. Can't get him all in one go, so let's just get his various parts. There we go. So we're getting rid of him. Let's get the rubber and get rid of all the other bits inside. Okay, so we, we've taken Mario out of the image. We've left with a big chunk though, so let's and I'm going to skip through this, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to select a square and move it across. So I'll fast forward through this. And we're back. And this is what I've done. It looks rubbish. Uh, basically I've just copied bits of the tree and pasted it. You can see all of these horrible edges which won't look very good so previously I was just selecting rectangles like this I don't want to do that anymore I'm going to select the lasso I'm going to select that area which Mario was kind of the shape of definitely all of the areas where there's a there's a clear discontinuity I go to effects blurs Gaussian blur and definitely about 25 so too too low a blur you can still see the lines too high, it's all just going to be one color. So I think 25 is a good one. It doesn't look great, it doesn't look great at all, um, but it's going to be not that noticeable when it's a thumbnail. Yeah, so you can see that discontinuity there. So it's going to be better when it looks like a thumbnail. Okay, so now we've got our demon. Oh, this was for the green demon challenge, uh, which the Game Grumps did, and I uh, I attempted the challenge, so that's why this is uh, Green Demon inspired. So I'm going to add a layer. If you don't know what layers do, um, basically they um, a separate, I guess layers is an excellent word for it, a separate layer of the image that you can move independently. So this one, if I look, look at this layer by itself, a lot of the um, image is transparent, there's nothing there, so the layer below is what comes through, but I'm moving this image on top, and yeah, I'm sure there's better explanations for it, but stuff it. So, let's, the problem is this demon's red, right? So let's make him a green demon. So we can make him any color we want, I particularly like the blue, because like the fire the fire like really pops, but I'm gonna go with green because that's what he is. A bit darker, 
bit lighter. Oh, too light. Let's go just a bit darker. All right, perfect. Now, I've got a one up. He's going to have a one up for a head. You saw the uh, you saw the final product. So let's. If I go, this is why we use layers. If I paste it on the same layer, and I try and put it on his head, it eats away. It overwrites the image that's there. I don't want that. So I'm going to put this for the moment on a new layer, and then I can just stick it on his head like that, like so. I'm going to resize. I'm going to, so his head's kind of at this angle, so I'm just going to get this and just put it on a bit of a tilt like that, perfect. Unfortunately, his horns are poking through, so let's get rid of those. We won't do anything particularly fancy with how we're going to get rid of the horns, we're just going to do this. So now, let's make it a bit bigger so we can get that bit going, oops, I selected the wrong layer. Easy peasy, nothing control Z can't fix. So there we go, so we've got covered. Now, let's get rid of the background for the moment, so we're just looking at what we want. So now, I'm happy with this, let's say. I mean, it's okay. Now I wanna treat these two layers as the same thing, which I can do with this. Merge layer down. So now instead of being on two opposite layers, they're the same layer. And now I'm going to duplicate them because I want that really nice glow effect that everyone uses on their thumbnails. So I've now duplicated that. I look, I get rid of one, and then I go, okay, get my magic wand. I'm going to select this whole guy, the whole guy, and I'm going to, I don't know why I've got blue. Let's select a nice green color, a nice green glowish color. It's quite a bright green, I suppose, but that'll do. Let's say that's what we wanted to do. So now we get our fill tool, fill the fill the image like that. There's still bits and pieces that aren't filled, so let's fill those in. Oops. Okay, there we go. So now when we have the one layer on top of the other, one of these guys is totally green. Let's select this, just this area. Okay, perfect. So now I tend to look at this image, but I'm manipulating this, this middle layer here because that's the one that's highlighted. So I control X, control V, I've pasted that green thing and now I move it around. Just in a, just in a, a square motion around. So I moved it across twice, up twice, up twice again left twice, left twice, down twice, down twice. And so it causes this rim around the edge. Now that looks good, but it's still not our blur effect just yet. We're gonna Gaussian blur it. 25, let's bring it down just a tad. Let's go 50, 14. Perfect, so now our character, which was originally looking like this, now he's got that glow. The other thing I wanted to do was add Mario's face. Um, just no no special, why not just picked out this one from the beginning of the Super Mario 64 part. Um, I'm gonna use the magic tool again just to clip that because I can get a pretty good extraction of his face. Get rid of all the blue. So it, 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 this, this works better. I, I'd have to normally go through with an eraser and do stuff like this. Um, unless there's a good separation of color, which in this case there was. So that's why I went for this face, as well as it being quite funny. Okay, so there we go, done. Control A, Control C, bring this over to our new template, our new thumbnail, put this on a new layer. There we go, Mario's face. Uh, let's make it a bit smaller, give it a bit of an angle. And there we go, now he's scared of the green demon. He's still not glowing yet. If you know YouTube, everything must be glowing. So let's select, let's duplicate again. And for the bottom layer, I'm just gonna select Mario. Select as much of him as I can. Let's just give him a standard white glow. We get the fill, white. Didn't get his hair or mustache. Normally this wouldn't affect anything, but we'll just do it for completeness. There we go. Now we want to select this area. Let's bring out 
Let's visualize his face, but we're still manipulating the layer underneath. So we can bring up the layer. We go twice to the right, twice down, twice up to the left, twice to the left, up twice, up twice, across uh, to the right twice, to the right twice. And so now we've got this nice boundary to him. And let's blur it. Perfect. So now he pops. If we bring in the background, pops. Now, the problem is the background is green and this guy's glow is green. So his glow is not really sticking out. So let's color correct. Okay, so that's, uh, that's blue. Now because a demon makes me think of hell, let's make this kind of like a hellscape like that and the green really pops now. Perfect. Got one more thing to do though. How does anyone know that we're dealing with a green demon challenge? Well, that's therein lies the problem. I haven't gone through most of these tools actually, but the big ones that I use are the magic wand, the paint bucket, the eraser, not so much the paintbrush. The other big one, oh yeah, and of course the, the uh, rectangle and lasso selections. Not so much this one, ellipse, never really done it. Text is what we're going to need. So we're talking about the green demon, exclamation mark. Um, that is tiny, that is tiny text. Let's make it, I, I like to like use impact. Um, let's make it smaller than that, please. Let's make it about one, whoops. So that's, that's another thing about, um, I mean, it's got pretty standard um, text selection and font size. Um, and I can click and edit. Uh, as soon as I click away and start typing something else, I can't click on this thing again. So make sure you do your text correctly on the first go. So there we go. So that was on a new layer. So again, this text is, I can move it independently. So we just center the top bit. There we go, green demon. Do I like this green color? Well, let's change it. So we've selected this N. But now we go, oh, well, actually, we want to select all the letters. Because remember, this is the only layer that we're seeing. So it's not going to select every green thing. It's just going to select all of these. So then we fill it. And we can actually just fill it, like, with green. And then go, hmm, let's change it from here. That's too blue. I do like the, the slightly bluish green, actually. I'm happy with that. Happy with that. But... Again, like with the blurs, in a thumbnail, all text must have a boundary. Now, you can do it pretty easily in Photoshop. You can't do it that easily in Paint.net, but then it's free. So here's the trick. I'm going to make it, I'm going to give it a black outline. So again, I duplicated it. The bottom layer becomes black. And now I want to select these things. So uh, that area is already selected. You can tell by the moving lines. So looking at the top one, manipulating the bottom again and we'll go two to the right two down two over to the left two to the left two to the up two to the up two to the right two to the right there we go we've got a thick border there let's say we don't want to do it that thick so let's go one to the right one down one across one across one up one up one to the right one to the right there we go that's not too bad at all now Let's view everything. All right, not too bad. This text is kind of, where's its jaunty angle? Now, if I try and select it and give it its jaunty angle, I'm moving part of it. The trick, you've seen it before, merge layer down, perfect. Now we can just manipulate this text. And there we go. Green demon, red hellscape. We've got our one-up demon who's green now, and he's got his nice green glow, and we've got Mario who's freaking out. I think that covers a lot of the techniques that I use to make thumbnails. So if that's all you need to do, you don't need Photoshop. It can do other things, and I'm sure Photoshop can do many things because you have to pay for it. But yes, you don't necessarily need it. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time. How do they compare?
they're similar, but they're very... The demon is a lot... Yeah, anyway. 